In this video, I want to be giving you guys a demo of the project that we're going to be building. So on the left, I have the Android emulator and on the right, I have the iOS simulator. Each of these apps is running a development build of our code. So for now, I'm going to open these ones up individually. So I'll open the iOS and then the Android app. The app just came through the homepage and then we have that swipe to refresh layout showing. So like I said, we're going to be caching data locally. So every time we open up the app, this will be indicating a call that is going to be refreshing the data in the app. You will also notice that the app here is in French and that's because the user has explicitly set the app to be in French. So everything in here is going to be shown in French. So on the iOS simulator, you'll notice that the app didn't go to the home screen and that's because on iOS, the user had set the app to require a password every time it is opened. So I'm going to go ahead and open it here with my passcode. So the account that is on, the, on Android and the one that is on iOS are the same. But you'll notice that the things are presented differently. For example, you notice that the total amount here is separated by a comma, but on the one that is in French, it is separated by a space. And whenever you're implementing localization and internationalization, you always want to make sure that the app correctly represents the user's locale. So I'm going to be sharing some of the tips and th some of the things I know about these things. On the homepage, we have three cards. The first card represents the breakdown of both income and expenses in the last one month. So you can see here we have these two cards which look differently. On the second card we have the most common expense categories. So the red bars is going to be a custom component that we are going to be building. And it's with it, it's going to be depending on the data we have. So we're going to be looking at how to use JavaScript array methods and object methods to create this component based on the data. So similarly we have the top revenue streams. So this one here is going to be basically the, the sources. We are going to be using the same component that we will build for the upper card. So down here we will see the recent transactions. Here we show the, the recent five. It so happens that all of these were additions. So that's why you see all of them are in green. But if we had one that was adding an expense, in fact, I can just go here and add it. So this is the addition screen. I can as well show it to you. So I'm going to choose I'm going to choose yes, online services. Maybe we bought a domain for our new idea. So let's say we paid uh, 20 bucks and I'll just save this. So notice when I save, we come to the detail page. So on the detail page, this is how it's going to look and we can edit it or delete it. But coming back to the home page, you can see that now we have a new transaction that was added and we have a subtraction here. So here we show only the last five. Now we can click see all to be able to see all our transactions in details. Now here we can see all the transactions we've made that are expenses. And on the second tab, we have all the transactions that are for the income. Now, whenever we have many transactions that are more than 20, we are going to be implementing infinite scroll here. So notice when I swipe up, you will notice that the list scrolls up to tips and then two items are added here. But whenever we reach the bottom and there are no more items to load, we show this, this text that you are up to date. And also on these individual list items, we have ability to swipe left and right and reveal different actions. Whenever we swipe from right to left, we reveal some, some options. So right now we have only one option, but if you had many, it will just be a matter of changing the, the UI. So here we can click delete and it's going to ask us if we really want to delete. So I can as well go ahead and say, okay, we want to delete. And once we delete, it's going to get, go ahead and remove. It's going to go ahead and get removed and the list is going to update accordingly. We can track and inspect everything that is happening in our app using the Reactotron tool. So this is Reactotron now. Right now it's connected to our iOS simulator. So we are able to track everything that's happening on the simulator as we develop. So you can see here, the last transaction we made was on this endpoint called get stats transaction. So you can see the status code, basically what happened. In fact, let me just bring it up. Okay, let me just maximize. So you can see the status code, what happened when you made that call. We can see what type of call it was. Then we can see how long it took. And then we're able to see the, the responses. So here you can see, you can see what the server returned. So we can see what headers were sent, which tokens were, was used. So it's a very important tool. Now, another thing you're going to want to debug is your local state. So Redux. Now here, when you click on state, you're going to be seeing all your, your state. So you can be able to see basically what the current state is of the application. And whenever an action is dispatched through Redux, we can still be able to see that by customizing the filter in Reactotron. So I'm going to go ahead and choose action here and actually escape here. And that is going to also show actions, so things that are sent to the reducers in Redux. We can see whenever we made this API call, it was successful and this action was dispatched. This is the data it was dispatched with. 
so that we can easily debug our applications. So now I'm, I'm going to go back to the homepage. So we have a drawer here where a user can quickly navigate to other sections of the app. Now I'm going to go to the overview. So whenever we go to the overview, we have different filters that we can use to basically look at data across different time ranges. So we will have a horizontal scroll view here. So users can scroll from left to right. One important section that we are going to be spending a lot of time on is the settings. So when I click on settings, you're going to be having this layout here. We have different cards and each of these blocks is going to be having different things. So for example, here we will have a way for users to share our app. So you can see we we'll implement, we we'll implement how to copy text to clipboard. We we'll implement how to share to other apps. So when I click that, you can see the share menu opens up and we can copy the, the text or we can just share to someone we have on our device. So we'll be looking at how to use SVGs. So this is an SVG. Now it's not straightforward how you can use that. So we're gonna be exploring what are the easiest ways to get it up and running and what considerations we need to make. On the second card, we have the account settings. So here a user can choose a different currency if they wanted. So also a user can change the language. Now, of course, by default, the app picks up the language that's being used on the device, but I added this to show you how you can add custom languages. So let's say you have a language that's not an international language, but you want your users to use this. So we'll be so in this case we are going to be adding it for Luganda, which is a language that most of most of people speak where I come from. All right. So on the second card, on the second card you can see security. So here a user is able to set up a passcode, so a passcode for their app. So if they don't want if they don't want someone to open their app and see their transactions, they can go ahead and put there a lock. This is going to be a test notification we create using React Native Reanimated. So I'm going to go here and show you how it's going to be different on Android. So I'm going to go to set a pin and I'm just going to set a pin here. So this is in French, so don't worry if you don't get stuff, but just to show you the toast. So you can see the toast we'll use here. This toast is actually the native one, the one that you get on, on, on Android by default. So on, on Android, we're going to be using a toast that's, that's already available, but on iOS, we're going to be building a custom one. Now, what I want to show you here is the is the change password. So change password is not actually going to be in our app, like the whole functionality to change the password is going to be in a web view. So when I click on change password, it's going to go ahead and open up a web view. So you can see it's loading here. So it's loading a page on some website. So here we can change our password. Now I'm going to enter my password, my current password. I believe it's password one, two, three. So let's change it. So password, I'm also going to change this to password. So if I enter a password that don't match, you can see the website works normally. It's, it detects that it doesn't match and it can prevent the user. So I'm going to enter the one that matches. So when it finishes to load, notice that it comes back to the app and we get the notification in the app. So this notification is the one in the app and we are not using any notifications that are on the website. So we are going to be seeing how to pass the token from, we are going to be seeing how to pass the user from the app to the website and how to detect which events are happening on the site so we can do something in the app. So you can see that redirect or that navigation was the one in our app. So down here we have a web setup notifications. Now here a user can set up a reminder for when they want to save. So right now it is 1831. So let me go ahead and set up a reminder that should run when we are on 1832. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. So we get, we get a toast that this one was set up. Then I'm going to close the app because you want to be outside the app for you to be able to get reminders. Otherwise, then you will already know what's going on since you, you will have, since you will be already active in the app. So let's wait for it to become 32 and we see how the notification would look. So now it's 32 and we got the notification here. You probably heard the sound and these are some that we are actually coming through in the day. So over here, we can go ahead and open it. All right. So when we open it, our app has a lock, so we can't immediately go through, but now we can add a lock and go ahead and be reminded that we need to save. So when the lock is wrong, we get this red error. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a correct one and uh, we log in and we can go ahead and save since we got notified. The next option is for remote notifications. So being able to receive a notification if we become inactive for seven days, so the user can decide to enable that notification or turn it off. So down here, we have the section for testing. Like I said, we are going to be implementing over the updates. So updating the app when it's already in the hands of the users, 
without them actually going to the app store to get it so some users are going to be opting in for the users that opt in this can be our internal people that would want to test the new changes to see if they are really working in production before we go and roll out the newer changes to all our user audience down here we can log out we can we have some app information we can see which version it is if it's in production or development we can see that here and we can go ahead and log out and then we get this toast here this is an info one you can see that the text is different so now i'm going to be showing you how deep links and universal links are going to work so every time a user signs up we are going to need to verify their email so i'm going to click on the sign up button and over here i'm going to enter one of my emails i will choose a username and a password so when i click sign up notice that we are brought to this screen and we get a success message we have this animation here that represents that an email was sent to us so the animation we're going to be implementing it using loti loti files and then we have an option to open an email client so when i click this Right now we don't have any email app here on the simulator but if we had one it would just like prompt you to use gmail or your email app so i'm going to go ahead and open my email inside the browser that's going to represent like an email client and we are going to be able to demo what i want to show you uh, even using that so i'm going to open safari here and i go to my mail okay so now we've logged in and we have a new email that is requiring us to verify our pass to verify our email so when i click on this email here notice that so the the ios system prompts us that prompts us to open this link inside expense tracker so whenever i click open it's going to go ahead and open and it's going to go ahead and open and then it's going to go ahead and verify our email and then tell us that the email was verified sorry about it showing and defined here we're going to fix that so the deep link was actually initiated by our server and then ios suggested us to open it in our app so we're going to be seeing how to set up that association using custom schemes so now that our email is verified um, i also want to show you how the reset would work so here if we wanted to reset our password maybe we forgot it so i'm going to enter a an email so chris at gmail.com so i'm going to click submit so that should send us a password reset email so i'm going to close the app since we don't have a client and then go back to safari so you can see a new email here that we can use to reset our password so when i click it notice that it also prompts to open in, in our app or in our expense tracker app so let's go ahead and confirm that so when we confirm that notice that it comes the app and then immediately it gets us to a screen where we can set a new password so let me go ahead and set a new password so remember our last password was password so now i'm going to use pass one two three then here i'm also going to use pass one two three so then we can go ahead and conf and submit you can see that our password was changed and we get the, the, the success message this is a translation issue and we are going to be going through these issues together so you guys can see how to actually fix most of these issues so now let's log in with our new account and our newer password and when i log in you can see the app is fresh we don't have a lot and yeah so that is the quick demo of the app i'm sure there are some other things i forgot to show but hopefully that gives you enough about what to expect in the course so in the next one we are going to go right away and start setting up our environment and build out this application